Good evening, everyone. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to uh, today's video where we're talking about where Donald Trump stands going into September at the start of this month with not that long before the election. Now, before we get into it, uh, likes, comments, subscriptions really do always help, and I greatly appreciate each and every one of them. And, uh, you know, if, uh, when I reach 500, I'm going to have a question and answer. So if there's any real questions that you want, I'm going to start opening it up. And uh, if you want to, go ahead and uh, ask a question. Uh, and depending on how good it is, uh, I may or may not answer it. Um, I probably will, though, for most of them, so long as I, I deem them appropriate. Um, I am trying to be somewhat professional with this channel um, but anyway so it does look like I'm actually going to wind up live streaming um, election night uh, so that's going to be fun that's going to be a very late night as well <laughs> anyway so let's go ahead and get into this um, so as you can see um, other than Nebraska's uh, second congressional district and main second congressional district. This is the Romney 2012 map with Iowa and Ohio added on. Um, except we also have to look at you know the states that are close. Pennsylvania is extremely close. Um, according to my model. It's within 2%. Florida's within a percent. Arizona is down to the hundredth of a percent. Um, and a lot there's a lot of competitive states on this map. North Carolina being one, Arizona being one. The entire Rust Belt, uh, minus Iowa and Ohio, are reasonably competitive. Nebraska's second is a competitive district. New Hampshire's competitive. Uh, you could argue that Maine's competitive. Florida's always going to be competitive. Um, some states that some people might think are competitive uh, but probably aren't. Texas. Um, Alaska is weird, but I think that's holdover from 2016. Um, stuff like that. Um, We'll obviously see Virginia is looking less and less competitive as time goes on. Um, if we go to it, by the way, here's Arizona, just for those who don't believe what me. Um, the other thing I'm doing is I'm not, I'm still not um, assigning uh, the undecided voters because I think it's wrong to make an assumption about what undecideds are going to do in a model. So I leave them in there, and generally speaking, the higher the amount of undecided or uh, other party candidates, the higher the uncertainty in that race. Um, with regards to the margins. But that's kind of a general rule of thumb. We actually didn't get a lot of polling today, by the way. Um, it was kind of lackluster at best. We only had one approval rating poll that qualified, and that was Rasmussen. Um, we didn't have a lot of national polls, and we had very few state-level polls uh, that were released. So take it for what you will. This could just be a decent day for Donald Trump. Um, in terms of what numbers do come out. Um, I may do a little bit more of a deeper dive regarding um, the cross tabs that I've been looking at because I don't think they line up with what I'd expect uh, with the top lines that uh, a lot of these pollsters have been releasing. Uh, their cross tabs just don't seem to make sense with the top line result. Um, so we're not, so, uh, so I'm gonna, do a deep dive on that myself and I may record that but probably not 
Um, and then there's um, Wednesday I'm going to be getting back to my soapbox um, and I do have a video planned out for that um, and I'm gonna, I'm, I keep saying um <laughs> I am working on scripting that episode right now because uh, I want to make it as good as I can get um, because I do feel like I should have something thought out and planned out. But let's go ahead and look at the Senate map because I think it's actually. What the stupid ad? No! Oh, good. And this is what the Senate map looks like this year. Of course, we have the double barrel in Georgia. Uh, Oregon's not going to flip. Illinois is not going to flip. Uh, I doubt New Mexico is going to flip. Doubt that Virginia is going to flip. Uh, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, probably not going to flip. New Jersey, almost certainly not going to flip for both of those. New Jersey and Delaware are more than likely not going to flip. And we go to the Republican side, Alaska, Idaho, Wyoming, South Dakota, Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma. I'll talk about Texas, um, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Tennessee, Kentucky, West Virginia, South Carolina. Those are not states that are going to flip. So I've left a reasonable mix. And this is really what the competitive map looks like in 2020 of what states are going to be competitive. Now, I'm personally immediately going to chuck Texas and Montana into states that I'm not even really thinking about as truly competitive for the Democrats. I don't trust Bullock. Yeah, I don't trust Bullock in Montana where uh, compared to um, Danes. And part of that is because Bullock had to run in the Democratic, or tried to run in the Democratic primary, and he that wound up dragging him further to left and disconnecting him from Montana voters and nationalizing his profile rather than keeping him a local figure who could have won the Senate race. I, I, I don't think that he's going to be able to win in Montana. Now, let's go ahead and chalk up two races that are almost certain to flip. Colorado is very, I'd say it's likely bordering on safe for Hickenlooper, despite some ethics violations. And Doug Jones, without running against um, Roy Moore, who knows what he did, um... I don't really see Doug Jones beating uh, Tuberville in Alabama. Uh, I, it's just you're not going to win against a yeah, against a popular football coach in Alabama. Yes, Tuberville did coach Auburn and not the University of Alabama, but he's still a very he's still reasonably popular football coach in Alabama, so you're not going to win against that. And he did win a national championship. Now, that's irrelevant, in my opinion, but he did beat Jeff Sessions, which means he's popular with Republicans, meaning that guess what? Tuberville's going to win. So now we get to Minnesota. Minnesota could be competitive, but I think Tina Smith is... I'm leaning this race to her. If the presidential race it goes to Trump, I could see the Republican winning, but I can't even remember his name so uh, off the top of my head, so I'm giving it to Tina Smith, obviously. I'm also leaning New Hampshire to the Democrats. Um just because I, I believe Shaheen is just a bit too strong there. Now, 
And then we look at the super competitive slate. Um, actually, before we get into this, I'm putting both Georgia races as likely Republican. Um, and this is partially because uh, one of them is a jungle primary and Kelly Lawfer is just not going to win that primary. You're going to get Collins, who is a uh, much more popular figure within the Georgia GOP, and he'll he's more than likely going to win that, um, especially when that goes to a runoff, which uh, is going to be on January 3rd. And, well, Republicans are going to vote in that race. Democrats almost certainly won't. Um Especially if Biden wins in November, Republicans are going to be extra motivated to deny an extra seat for the Democrats. Um, and in the main race, uh, Purdue is, he's popular, is it Purdue or Isaacson? The I always, it's, I, I sometimes get them both mixed up, but the other one is just an incumbent running for re-election in a red state in a presidential election year. And we all know what that recipe means. He's winning. So, that puts the Republicans at 49. I don't really see a reasonable path for fewer than 49 seats for the Republicans. Which is extremely bad news for the Democrats especially bad if Biden wins because there would be a very good chance that the Republicans enter 2022 the midterm year with a majority already in the Senate and projected to pick up far more seats So, let's talk about these races in order of... Let's go alphabetically, why not? Uh, Arizona. Mark Kelly is up in Arizona, and most of that has to do with how terrible of a candidate McSally is. And I don't really expect McSally to be able to ride off Trump's coattails if he does manage to pull off Arizona. She's probably going to run three to four, maybe five points behind Donald Trump in Arizona. So Trump would have to win the state by about five, five to six points to ensure that um, McSally wins her seat. So I am leaning that towards Mark Kelly. Then we go to Iowa, a state where uh, the Republican Party has grown in strength but also a state where the Republican Party is doing quite well. Uh, both of their senators are Republicans, Joni Ernst and Chuck Grassley. Their governor is a Republican. Now, they only have one of it, I was four congressional districts represented by a Republican, but they had three of four after 2016. And I was reasonably swingy, so it's possible that the Republicans pick up one of those congressional districts. I am leading this race to Joni Ernst. And I think she, I think she will hold this seat. And the next state would be Maine. And I this is the one that really makes it tough. Because Collins is one of the more moderate Republicans in the Senate. And she's been an extremely good fit for Maine since the 90s. And she's won in Democratic years, you know, years favoring the Democrats. 
in Maine, which up until recently was a fairly blue state. And she's won in years where she should win. And I think if it hadn't been for the pandemic, I really don't I, I really wouldn't have seen her losing this. But being tied to Trump during a year where uh, during the pandemic, um, really, as well as all the stuff surrounding Kavanaugh, has it really it really dragged down her approval rating, and she might not be able to do well enough in the Portland area, in the Portland suburbs. Which truth is, Portland is Portland, Maine is more of a suburb of Boston than. Uh, it being its own city, and I know people from Maine are going to be angry at me for saying that, but we also have to remember the D.C. suburbs extend all the way to Prince William County and uh, throughout a lot of Maryland and even into West Virginia and Chicago suburbs include places like Gary, Indiana, and uh, even up into Wisconsin. So it's kind of one of those, yeah, it, it is reasonably fair to say Portland could be argued to be par part of the Boston metro area, but whatever. Um for now, I'm actually changing this and tilting Maine to the Democrats towards Gideon. And then we have Michigan and North Carolina. And polling in Michigan has not looked very good for John James, a Republican nominee, against Gary Peters. However, there is a decent number of undecideds in most polls in Michigan. So there is some uncertainty with this race, but I think most people have it right in saying that Gary Peters does have an advantage. I'm going to say it's only leaning it. I'm, I think Peters is going to win that, but um, John James could surprise us. And we go to North Carolina, and I don't know whether Tillis is going to win that seat. Um... He's not the most popular senator, and he's also got a tough race in a tough battleground state in a presidential election year that is going to get a lot of money thrown at it. And I'm not sure if he can win that. He's going to probably trail Trump by a point or two in North Carolina. Whether or not that's enough to cause him to lose is a different story altogether. North Carolina is one of the more competitive states this year, so I could see it. And actually, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna tilt this race to the Democrat in North Carolina, and that gives us a 50-50 Senate going into. Uh, you know, going into Inauguration Day. Now, I did say that there weren't going, that there wasn't going to be a state that voted differently in the presidential elections than voted in the Senate elections, but I've got two here, McSally and Tillis, both Republicans, both in states I think are going to go to Donald Trump, both losing their Senate seats. So there is still there is still split ticket voting, but it's much less than it used to be. So yes, I, I really this is a not unreasonable map. Now, of course, if Donald Trump wins the election, uh, I do expect Republicans to hold the Senate. I think that would be the obvious one, um, and it just depends on which states Trump was to carry. Though I think the most likely outcome would be Tillis, James, Collins winning their races. Um, 
and Minnesota and Arizona would depend on how much Trump won those states by, or if he won them at all. Um, if he wins Minnesota, it's a question of did he win by enough? Um, in Arizona, it's did, would he have won by enough? And Trump, it's, and with Minnesota, it's did Trump win really? Uh, New Hampshire, did Trump win the state? Depends on whether or not he carries it. Um, I don't really see uh, Gade winning in Virginia um, as much as quite a few people, myself included, want to see Mark Warner gone. Mark Warner's just too popular in Nova and Richmond and Norfolk. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and end it here. I hope you all have a nice day. I'll see you all next time. Remember, likes, comments, subscriptions, they always do help. I have a Twitter and a Patreon. Both, well, Patreon's down in the comments along with the link to my model. Comments, description, that's what I meant. Anyway, have a very nice evening. See you all next time. Bye-bye.